Spinola is my favorite place. Why is Spinola your favorite place? Because I get to do activities. Hey, good afternoon. My name is Dr. Kelvin Mackey at STEM NOLA, and welcome to STEM NOLA at Home. You know, on March 13th, it pretty much shut down the nation due to COVID. And ever since March 13th, STEM NOLA has been trying to decide or find a pathway to make sure that we still can reach out to students and make sure that they're engaged in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. So this is our platform. And for the last five weeks, we've been holding these sessions every Thursday around different topics. And also we, we spoke to, we made them relevant to what we were dealing with in terms of, of, of COVID. Uh, STEM Knoll is an organization we founded uh, six and a half years ago to expose and inspire and engage communities in science, technology, engineering, and, math, engineering and mathematics. In the last six and a half years, we've engaged over 40,000 students, 10,000 families, and over 1,500 college students and STEM professionals. And, in those six and a half years, we've put over $700,000 in the hands of college students as interns, as we train college students and then deploy them out into the community, making sure that our children are learning all, of the, all the skills that they need for the 21st century. Parents and students, I want you all to know everywhere I go, I bring my little friend with me. This is my little friend, Alpha. And Alpha is a humanoid uh, produced by one of our partners, UB Tech Robotics. And parents, in the 21st century, either we're training our kids from the neck up or the neck down. And if we're training our kids from the neck down, this is their competition. This is their competition, and they cannot win. A humanoid is a robot that tries to act like a human. This humanoid has a servo everywhere we would have a joint. And through coding and robotics and artificial intelligence, we can program humanoids or robots to behave physically like humans. This is the competition of the 21st century, and we have to make sure that we are training our kids from the neck up and not the neck, not the neck down. Uh, did you make him do whatever? Did it make him dance? That's okay. Let him do his push-ups. I mean, Alpha can dance and do push-ups, anything that we can do physically. And the reason why it's very important that we talk about Alpha today is because our topic is cybersecurity. And we're happy to have some partners hosting the show with us today in this nice shirt uh, of, the cyber, of the Cyber Information Center. Cy uh, nice shirt from the Cyber Information Center who's working with us, who's working with us, who's working with us today. And uh, their whole thing is cybersecurity. Understanding cybersecurity, uh, teaching cybersecurity, making sure our kids have the, have the information for the 21st century. And just like we're talking about this humanoid, many of the things in our society have been automated. And since it's been automated, we have to make sure that we can protect it from attacks, through the networks, through systems, uh, uh, everything from your, your telephone to your handheld devices. We have to make sure that people cannot crack the code and sabotage change of steel data. And that's what we are talking about today. Last week, we had a session on the circulation in the heart. And students, we ask you all that you send pictures in to show us uh, your accomplishments at home. Last week, we had Dejan Glasper of St. Rita Elementary sending a picture and Margot Capocasia sent in a picture. Both of them produced beautiful hearts and, and demonstrated a heart in circulation. We also had Ethan and Adriana Vazquez from St. Andrew Apostle, Apostle School. We had Liam and Adam uh, Hollard from Lusher, uh, Lusher Charter School and Country Day. Thank you all for definitely chiming in, tuning in, and we had uh, Jonathan Bailey from Holy Cross. And I'm happy to say for the first time, we had an international group, uh, Billy uh, James Dega, he's on the, they, they're, they're with us today. And Billy uh, with the National Society of Black Engineers in Ghana had their students on and he had uh, Ransford, Desmond 
and Emmanuel from Accra in Ghana, West Africa, uh, tune in. We look forward to formulating this uh, uh, partnership with Ghana. We reached out to the State Department and see how we can create linkages to make sure that the kids in Ghana and the kids in places like New Orleans and across this country can talk to each other and work with each, work with each other and grow and create a better society for all of us. So thank you all. Again, I'm Dr. Kelvin Mackey, and now I'm gonna turn this over to Heather Howe of the NYSERT, uh, NYSERT Center at the Cyber Innovation Center to host our uh, program today on cybersecurity. Uh, Heather, thank you all, and let's do this. Thank you. Thank you so much for that wonderful introduction. And um, thank you, Nola, for having us um, here today with you to show you um, and talk to you about cybersecurity and about the Enigma machine. Um, so again, my name is Heather Howell, and I'm here with an organization called NYSERC, which stands for National Integrated Cyber Education Research Center. We are a Louisiana-based organization. Um, but we nationally um, send a message to K-12 schools about cybersecurity awareness um, so that students like you um, can learn about cybersecurity and possibly be interested in joining the cybersecurity workforce. Um, so we're going to go ahead and get started with our agenda for today. So, um, our agenda for today, um, we're going to start with our, our topic, which is the Enigma. So we're going to learn some vocabulary about the Enigma and cybersecurity. We are also going to um, learn about some experiments. So we're going to learn about what objectives and activity questions we're going to answer throughout this presentation. And finally, in the experiment, we're going to learn how to use an Enigma cylinder that's pictured here. We're gonna build this, and then we're gonna use it to both decrypt and encrypt a secret message. So the vocabulary for today's session. The first vocabulary term is Enigma. So the Enigma machine that we're talking about today was a portable cipher machine that was used by the Germans and most famously was used by the German military during World War II to both encrypt and decrypt messages. So secret messages were being sent by the military using the, the Enigma machine. Encryption is another term that we're gonna be using today. What is encryption? Encryption is the process of converting information into a secret code. Decryption is the process of transferring information that has been made unreadable through encryption back to its unencrypted form. So it, decryption makes encrypted messages readable. And then finally, a cipher. A cipher is a secret form of communication. Um, so when you send a cipher, you're sending a secret form of communication. And the Enigma machine made um, ciphers, one type of cipher possible, but there are many, many types of ciphers that have been used throughout history. And cryptography is a specific field of study that studies ciphers. So one of the key vocabulary terms that we're going to be using today is, what is the Enigma machine? So if our, I believe our host had a question there, what is the Enigma machine? What is the Enigma machine? Ooh, some great answers coming in. All right, great response, guys. So a, an Enigma machine is a machine used to encrypt and decrypt messages. Awesome. Okay, so let's move on. So um, here you're gonna see a picture of one form of the Enigma machine and the 
Enigma cylinder that we're going to be building today with the Pringles can. So our objectives for today. So what will we learn? Uh, the first thing that we're going to learn is you will understand how the Enigma machine was used in World War II to send secret messages. So how was the Enigma machine used to send secret messages during World War II? And the second thing that we're going to learn today is you will build and use an Enigma cylinder to both decrypt and encrypt a secret message. So our hosts have a question posted. So our question is, what are we building today? What are we building today? Oh, those responses are coming in fast. What are we building today? All right. Fantastic job, folks. We are building an enigma. Okay, so we're going to be answering three questions today. So question one, what is the enigma machine? Question two, how is the enigma machine used to decrypt a message? And question three, how is the enigma machine used to encrypt a message. So be on the lookout for those three questions as we're working through our Enigma lesson today. All right, before we get started with how the Enigma machine history came to be, let's make sure that we all have our materials handy and make sure that we're prepared to start the build. So the materials that um, you were asked to have handy and ready for today's build is you will need a small Pringles can like the snack size. Um, you will need the printed NYSERC Enigma page and the instructions were specific that you need to print to the actual size and not fit to page. It's very important. Actual size. You need scissors, clear tape, pencil, and paper. Now, we ask that you um, pre-cut the strips of paper of the printed Enigma page, but if you did not, now is a good time to do that. So I'm going to quickly demonstrate for you how to correctly cut the strips of paper if you did not already cut them. So you should go ahead and start cutting them now if you did not. So I'll demonstrate for you real quickly how you should cut those strips of paper. So you should have printed out the um, Pringles can Enigma sheet and make sure that you print it out um, to actual size and not uh, fit to page. And so when you're cutting, make sure that you cut along the black lines. So you want to cut along each one of the strips and make sure you cut each individual strip out. So cut along each individual strip and cut each strip out. So while we're going through the history, if you have not already cut out the individual strips, go ahead and do that now and then put them to the side. Okay, so let's talk about the history of the enigma. enigma. So we learned in the, in the introduction and in the vocabulary that um, the Enigma was an encryption machine that most famously was used by the German military. And it had been used before World War II, but it really started to be used a lot during World War II. Um, so the power of the Enigma came from it being so simple for the operator to use, but so difficult for anyone to be able to decipher. Um, so they could not figure out how um, the encrypted letter was being sent. 
So the number of possible ways to jumble a message using the German uh, Nazi World War II era Enigma machine was 159 quintillion. That was the number of possibilities um, of using the Enigma machine. So the, the cipher was nearly impossible to break for a very long time. So how is that possible? What was the science behind it? So the Enigma machine is what was called an electromechanical machine. It was very similar to a typewriter. So the most simple models had three wheels on top. The wheels were like what we call rotors. And inside of the case, it allowed the operator to set the rotors to a certain position. And every single day, uh, the operator would get a new position for the rotors that would tell them um, how to set the rotors so that they knew what the encryption was going to be. And the operator would then press a key on the keyboard, which would activate an electric circuit, and a different letter would light up. So for example, if you type the letter T on the keyboard, the letter G would light up. So this is a picture of, the Enigma, of one of the Enigma machines. So here at the top is where the three rotors were. So each day these rotors would be set to different positions. Here is the keyboard where the operator would type the message in. And the lamp board here would light up a different letter. So if the person typed a T here, the encrypted message G would light up on the lamp board. And then the plug board is where all the circuitry was. So the code was eventually broken. So um, several teams worked on this, but there were mathematicians in Poland and British mathematicians at Bletchley Park that um, worked with the allies to break the Enigma code. And this gave the allies the ability to read top secret Nazi communications and it greatly disrupted the Nazi war machine. So one of the most famous uh, mathematicians that worked on this project was a man named Alan Turling, who's pictured here. So they de developed a machine that they called the bomb. It was a top secret electronic computer that quickly tried every possible combination of letters to crack the code. So it was an incredible feat of engineering and is considered by many one of the first electronic computers. So when we think of a computer, we think of a laptop computer. But this is a picture of what Alan Turing, Turing's The Bomb looked like. So each one of these rotors was constantly spinning and trying to simulate the different possible combinations that the Enigma machine could spit out. So this is what is known as one of the very first computers ever created by Alan Turling, and the purpose was to break the Enigma code. All right, so now it's time for us to build one of our own Enigmas. So we are going to build a model of the Enigma cylinder, um, but for this purpose, we are going to, instead of using three rotors, we're just going to use one. So you need to have your small Pringles can and your cut strips of paper. And I'm gonna walk through with you together of how to build um, this model that you see on your screen now. So let's build this together. So you'll need to get your empty Pringles can. Um, I, I snuck and ate my Pringles, so um, you have a, you have an Enigma cipher machine and a snack. So the first strip of paper that you want to find is the strip of paper that at the bottom says input. So find the strip of paper that at the bottom says input. And we're gonna take that strip of paper and we're going to wrap it around our Pringles can next to the end with a cap. You wanna wrap that until the word, the, words, the word input is covered. You wanna wrap it tight enough so that it, it doesn't, you know, it's not slipping off, but you wanna make it to where it can twist. And taking a clear um, piece of tape, you're going to tape, the, um, you're gonna tape your strip of paper, 
covering it so you cannot see the word input, but make sure that you don't tape the strip to the Pringles can because we want this to be able to turn. So tape it so that the piece of um, the, the piece of paper can still turn. So you want it like that. So your first um, rotor here is the input. The second piece that you want to find is the strip of paper marked rotor one. So find the strip of paper marked rotor one. Now the other two rotors, rotor two and three, you can just put those to the side. Those are intended for a large size Pringle can, but for today, we're just going to use rotor one. So same thing, place rotor one next to your input, wrap it, and then tape it secure so that you can no longer see the word rotor. It should be able to turn freely. Now the last strip that we want to find is the strip that says reflector. So find your strip that says reflector at the bottom. Wrap your reflector next to rotor one. And same thing, we want to wrap that until the reflector is, you can no longer see that. and then tape it and secure it. Make sure that you don't tape to the Pringles can itself. You want it to be able to turn freely. So now you have three um, rotors. So at this point, you should have a completed Enigma machine or Enigma cylinder that looks like this. Okay, on your um, Enigma cylinder, to the far left, you have your input. In the middle, you have rotor one, and to the far right, you have a reflector. Input, rotor, reflector. This is going to be in part in, very important when we start doing the um, encryption and decryptions. All right, so let's start practicing how to encrypt and decrypt a message. So these are the steps and we're gonna work through these together. So step one is to turn the rotor settings so that the letters match the order found for the rotor settings, okay? So the first rotor setting that I am going to set, I'm gonna set my rotors so that it is an AAA -A -A setting. And I'm having some focus issues here. Let's see what's going on. Here we go. Okay. So my first rotor set, uh, um, setting is going to be AAA. -A -A. So take your Pringles can um, Enigma cylinder and you are going to set the rotors so that the setting is A, A, A. So turn them so they line up and read across A, A, A. Now, the next thing that we want to do is we want to follow um, Beginning with the input segment, we wanna find the letter of the encrypted message and follow the lines across the rotors to the reflector segment. We'll continue following the lines as it reflects back across the rotors to the input segment. The final letter will be the actual letter of the message. So let's see what this looks like. Okay. So the first letter that I'm going to decrypt in my first secret message, the encrypted letter is D. So let's find out what the decrypted letter is. So I have my rotor set to AAA. 
So I'm going to find the letter D. Now I'm going to follow this line and until it reflects back to the letter that is the, um, the decrypted message. So find the letter D and then I'm gonna follow the line. So D and follow the line. It reflects back, keep following the line, back to the input. So the decrypted letter for the first letter is C. Now the last step in this process of using the Pringles can Enigma is probably the hardest step to remember. And that is after each letter is encrypted, you need to turn the middle rotor up one. So A becomes B. That's always the hardest thing for me to remember. I have to constantly remind myself to do that. So what do I mean there? So I've decrypt, decrypted the first letter. So I'm going on to the next letter. So what I need to do is shift up one. So A, I shift to B. So now reading across, I have A, B, A. My next letter that is encrypted is the letter C. So I've made my shift. So now I'm going to follow the letter C. Follow the letter C, follow, follow the line. Follow it through the reflector, it reflects back. And the encrypted letter, or the decrypted letter, is the letter Y. Now, let's continue. You can follow right along with me. So, next thing we need to do, we need to shift up again, okay? So I move the middle rotor up, click one. So now we have A, C, A. Our next in, um, encrypted letter is the letter W. Find the letter W in the input. I'm gonna follow the letter W. Follow the line to the reflector, it reflects back. Follow the line, the letter W. Um, the decrypted letter is the letter E. Okay, now we have to click up again. So go back to the beginning. C clicks up one to D. So now reading across, I have A, D, A. Our next encrypted letter is the letter K. So find the letter K in the input. Here's letter K. I'm gonna follow the line, follow the line as it goes to the reflector. It reflects back, follow the line. It reflects back to input E. So my decrypted letter is the letter E. I have one more letter in this encryption. So I go back to the start and I have to click up one letter. So now reading across, I have A, E, A. My last encrypted letter is the letter I. So I find the letter I and I'm going to follow it across, follow it across the rotor to the reflector. It reflects back to input to the letter R. So my decrypted letter is the letter R. And my message is cyber. Okay, so let's try another one. I'm gonna start you on this one and then I want you to finish it, okay? So our next rotor setting, instead of starting AAA, I'm gonna start my rotor setting on A, B, C. So let's readjust. My rotor setting is A, B, C. So reading across, I'm gonna start A, B, C as my starting rotor set, um, setting. So my first encrypted letter is L. Same process, I'm gonna find the letter L, follow the line from input to the reflector, 
it reflects back. I keep following and back to input and the decrypted letter is S. Okay. Remember, go back to the start for the next letter and I'm going to click one up. So now reading across, I have A, C, C. Next letter is N. So I'm gonna start with the letter N, follow it. It reflects back through the rotor. And my next uh, decrypted letter is the letter T. Okay, I'm gonna keep working on this cipher and I want to see if you can. So we're going to take a minute. I'm gonna let you work, see if you can decrypt this message, and then we're gonna come back together to see what the solution is. Okay. So I have just solved my cipher, so let's see what you got. So my solution to the second cipher is STEMNOLA. STEMNOLA. So in this activity, we have learned how to set our rotors and how to take an encrypted message and and um, an encrypted message and decrypt it so that it's in a readable form. Okay, so I believe now um, our hosts have a question for us before we move on to our next section which is how to make a message into an encrypted message. So our question now is um, how is the Enigma machine used to decrypt a message? How is the Enigma machine used to decrypt a message? Lots of answers coming in. Awesome. So each letter means something different, like D equals C. Great job, guys. Okay, so now, Here's the fun part. If you want to be able to send a secret message, how do we do that? So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to encrypt a message using the Enigma cylinder. So um, in this one, I'm gonna show you how to encrypt a, a secret message, though people who know me well know this is a secret. One of my favorite places is Disney. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to set a new rotor setting and I'm going to send a secret message by taking a message and encrypting it into different letters. Okay, so let me show you how to do that. So the first thing I need to do is I need to determine what my rotor settings are going to be. And if I wanted another person to be able to decipher my message, not only would they need to have the Enigma cylinder, um, the same Enigma cylinder that I was using, they would need to know what the rotor settings were. So I would need to, need to tell them what the rotor settings are. So for this one, I'm setting the rotor settings to my initials, HRH. So I'm going to take my Enigma cylinder and I'm going to tell my friend that I'm going to, I'm going to set my rotors to HRH. -H. So H is going to be my, my input. And then my, sec, my rotor is going to be set at R. 
And then my reflector is going to be set at R. So I'm going to set it at H. The middle section will be R. And then the last section will be H. So when I read it across, when I read it across, it will be H R H. Okay. All right. So I have this message and my message is Disney. So what I would like to do is I want to, um, I want to encrypt this message. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to start with the letter D and it's the same process except in reverse. So starting with HRH, I'm going to start with the letter D. So starting with the letter D, I'm going to follow the line. Here's the letter D and I'm going to follow the line through the reflector and the encryption for the letter D will be the letter C. So I would tell my friend that the first letter of my secret message is C. Now I have to remember to always go back to start. So I have HRH now, but I need to shift my middle rotor one click. So one click up becomes HSH. So to encrypt the next letter, I. So find the letter I, I, follow the um, line across to the reflector, it bounces back and it becomes the letter F. Okay, to the third letter means I have to click three times. So back to the start, shift S up to T. So now going across, I have H, T, H. My third letter is S. So I find the letter S, follow the line across. It reflects back to the letter P. Fourth letter means I need to shift again. I go back to the start, shift up one, one click. So now I have H, U, H. I'm, I'm encrypting the letter N. So I go to the letter N. I follow the line and encrypt to the letter P. Now notice that we have two P's, but the reason we have two P's is because we made a shift in between. Okay, the letter E, we need to go back to the start, shift again. So now I have H, V, H. I'm encrypting the letter E. E, follow the line through the reflector and back to the letter A. E becomes A. Finally, Y means one more click. Okay, so we're going to H, click up to W. So now we have H, W, H. We're encrypting the letter Y. So I find the letter Y, follow the line through the reflector, and the input or the encrypted letter is A again. So my encrypted uh, mes uh, message there for Disney using the rotor set in HRH would be CFPPAA. So if my friend knew the rotor setting and had an Enigma machine using the same machine that I was using or an Enigma cylinder, the same Enigma cylinder that I was using, my friend could know where I wanted to go this summer on vacation. Okay. So from that, you can create your own messages. So um, all you would need to do is decide what your rotor settings were going to be and you can create your own messages and send your own secret messages with the Enigma machine. 
So today we talked about the Enigma machine using just one rotor. But if you wanted to, you could expand upon this and use a Enigma machine with a full Pringles can and the other two strips of paper using three rotors. It's the same process, but every time you have to shift one more rotor, okay? So it makes the possibilities even more complex. So, cryptography. Why are we talking about the Enigma machine today? Um, one of the things that we like to talk about at NYSERC and at Cyber Innovation Center is about careers that you could have in cyber and cybersecurity. Um, so one of those career fields, if you enjoyed today's activity on encryption and how to send secret codes, um, one field that you might be interested in is cryptography. So a person who studies cryptography or uses cryptography is called a cryptographer or a, a crypt, crypt analyst or an encryption expert. Um, so some things that you might want to learn about this career field is that um, people that go into cryptography uh, often have a, a degree in mathematics or computer science. It is a very high paying job. The median salary here, that means like the middle salary is over $100,000. It's a very, very well paying job. Um, the job growth index, that means how many people they think they're going to need in this career field is very high. So the demand for cryptologists and people who are experts in encryption is very, very high. So some of the things that um, they're looking for, for people that would like a job or would be interested in cryptography, someone who's very creatable, creative, very intelligent, um, that likes to do complex problems, and also that's very trustworthy, um, because this is someone who is probably gonna be working in uh, national security or security for a, an organization or a company. So there is a little QR code there for you to scan if you want to learn more about cyber security. Okay, so I believe um, at this point your um, organizers had another question for you about um, encryption. Or did we, yeah, I think we answered that one with the vocabulary. Yeah, there, there we go. In, what is encryption? So your final question for today is, what is encryption? Awesome, you guys are amazing. So turning information into a code is encryption. Yeah, so if that's something that you enjoy doing in this activity today, you might wanna consider a career field in cryptography. Um, there's several universities um, here in Louisiana that offer that and across the nation. So um, investigate that career field. Okay, so with that, I am now going to turn it back over to our STEM NOLA organizers. And I thank you all for your time today. I hope you enjoyed learning about the history of the Enigma machine and how the code was cracked and how to use um, uh, Enigmas for, for yourself. Thank you so much. Thanks, students. I hope you all enjoyed it. Uh, to uh, Billy Jane Diggin, our friends in Ghana, uh, to my, my friend Wallace in Atlanta and different people sending pictures. I hope you all really enjoyed today. And let's give uh, NYSER and the Cyber Innovation Center a hand. I mean, what they brought to us today is something that's very relevant to our everyday life. And these are the, these are the type of skills and the type of careers that you can go into uh, and transform uh, the rest of your life because these are the things things that we need. Now we have a couple of questions. So Heather is answering them in the chat room. I can, I can answer them in the chat if you pr prefer. Yeah, I'm trying to fill them. But one of the questions that I just saw is, um, there were questions about the full size Pringles can, which is the much more complex version. And if participants want to do challenge themselves to do the full size Pringles, um, they can go to nicerc.org N-I-C-E-R-C.org, and the instructions and video for the full-size Pringles um, is there. I'll put it in the chat box for them.
I was about to ask, please, please put that in the chat so they can definitely go and see all that you all have to offer. If there are educators on uh, the event today, believe me, uh, NYSER has an unbelievable cybersecurity curriculum that's aligned to standards that you can bring into your school, into your classroom uh, effortlessly and, uh, and continue to engage, to engage students. How can you get a robot? Somebody say, how can they get a robot? You can't because it's mine. <laughs> no, no, this is the Elf and the Elf is sold by UB Tech and they have a new robot coming out that I'll be showing soon. And we'll be actually selling those robots on our site uh, because so many people are, are interested in these robots. And the robots are amazing because we control them with our cell phone or with, or with your iPad. And there's different ways you can program it using Scratch, uh, using, uh, I believe, Python. You even, when, when you know, I'm going to mark myself, talk to your parents. When we were growing up, we had something called Rock'em Sock'em Robots. And you actually can get two of these robots in box. Uh, there's a Gladiator version. But at all at the same time is that it's teaching you how to code and you get an immediate response. And that's what uh, many people uh, love about it. With that said, I want to talk to you all about what we're going to be doing next next, next Thursday. We'll be back at our regular time at 1 p.m. Central, and we'll be doing sound. And on our sound module, you will build a kazoo. You'll build a kazoo or a rain, a rain stick, a rainmaker and a kazoo. Uh, on our regular STEM Saturdays, when we have sound, is an amazing event because, you know, this is New Orleans, so we're bringing jazz band, we're bringing... A, a, a second line band, we are bringing a, a harpist, a violinist, all these different people doing things to show how sound is made. And then we study the physics of sound. Where next week we're gonna talk to you about the physics of sound and why that's very important. Uh, also, STEM NOLA, we, we have summer camps coming up uh, as, as of today. Today I believe we engaged over 100 kids in our summer camps. And we have a robotics camp where we're partnering with UB Tech again, and we're using a, 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 a the Jamu robots in our robotics camps. We have STEM hands-on camps, and our STEM hands-on camps, we use a lot of our own, a lot of our kits, and we will mail these kits to you. We will mail these kits to you. We will mail these kits to you, and you put it together at home while we direct you virtually uh, from our from our office. Next week we'll be announcing. Last, if you go and Google STEM NOLA and Chevron, uh, Chevron, UB Tech, and STEM NOLA has entered into a partnership and Chevron has agreed to sponsor a, a UB Tech summer camp for over 200 kids in the New Orleans area. If you're in the New Orleans area, we'll be opening registration next week. Uh, and we have the, uh, the beginner's kit and advanced kits uh, for, for robotics. And the thing about robot, thing about UB Tech, UB Tech is a commercial robotics company. So the kits they built is based on real uh, ro robot technology. And we've never seen anything like this in the, Louis in the state of Louisiana in terms of the robotic technology that we are bringing to kids. And we will be opening registration for that camp next week. Uh, please register if you're in the New Orleans area. Scholarships are available to you. If you're not, it's still open. Uh, to everyone nationally, uh, but our goal at STEM NOLA is to make sure that every kid, no matter where he or she may be in these United States, if not the world, uh, they have somewhere to plug in and have access to the knowledge and the skills that they need to succeed in the 21st century. So on behalf of STEM NOLA, I want to say thank you to all of you, uh, to Heather and Kevin and my friends at, at NYSERT. Thank you all for all that you do. We look uh, forward to working with you all again in the future. Uh, to the students, uh, keep pushing and know that there's, this is the greatest country in the world. It's the only place where you can get up and create a better tomorrow for yourself if you're willing to put in the work. We're going to make sure that we do our part. We just ask you that you do yours. Okay, thank you all. Have a great day. Thank you.